Today we've got a crazy story of a grown man getting jealous over the attention a 9 year old girl gets on her birthday. We'll get to that in a bit but first, entitled mother upset that her boyfriend who tried to kill me isn't invited to Christmas brunch. A little backstory, my mom has always put her love interests and relationships before her children. I, 27 year old female, have one older sister, 30 year old female, and Tata's mother has been this way since I can remember. She's uprooted us from home to move to a new city for a man she loved who was married, made me stay the night at a boyfriend's house that I was uncomfortable at, and went as far as ditching my sister and I in a foreign country in a hostel while she went off with a man she just met for a one night stand. She also slept with a guy I was seeing when I was around 17 or 18. Luckily, he was of legal age. You get the picture. The thing is, she's also incredibly intelligent, professional, built an amazing career for herself in academia, and has and can be very supportive and loving of both my sister and I. She's given us both so many opportunities in life as a single mother, so it feels terrible to even point out these issues I have with her. Cut to 2019, I'm now married with a wonderful husband. My sister has a long-term partner, Entitled Mother's been dating this young man. They both live overseas where she's currently working. Entitled Mother has told us of their turbulent relationship, and as always, we watch as she shapeshifts to fit the type of woman she thinks he'll like. Like clockwork, we see her uproot her life, schedules, everything to pursue this unhealthy relationship. She slowly but surely cuts us out of her life. It must be said that she's been physically, emotionally, and verbally abusive throughout my life. And this behavior has continued toward her partner. He's also abusive toward her. My sister and I have gone through the motions and tried to get her help, but she doesn't believe in mental illness. Nor does she listen to anything we have to say. Our whole lives were spent trying to keep her stable, but now that we have our own lives, for our own mental stability, we've just left it to her. That's been a whole thing in itself. Cut to the pressing issue. Two years ago, her boyfriend tried and threatened to end me, my husband, my sister, her partner, and my mom in a drunken rage in the country they lived in at the time. He was charged with five counts of attempted murder. Most traumatic moment of my life. I'm still dealing with the after effects. Entitled mother pleaded with the court to get him off the charges and they were dropped. She went back to him pretty quick. Now, entitled mother and boyfriend are back in my home country. They're trying to build a life here, and Entitled Mother stated that she's moved back to work on relationships with my sister and I. B.S. The boyfriend sent a crappy two-line email apology. Through therapy, I've decided to forgive them both, and have worked on my relationship with my mom, and even seen the boyfriend a few times. This took a long time to get to this stage. My sister doesn't want to set eyes on the boyfriend, and I 100% support her decision. She's still working on a relationship with mom. Christmas is coming up, and it's tradition in our family to have a family brunch. Never missed a year except once when mom was stuck overseas due to COVID. So I call mom to chat about plans, and she's now crappy that her boyfriend's not invited. He's not welcome at our home ever. I think that's a fair boundary. She said things like, I can't keep choosing between you and boyfriend, and how long is it going to take? He did that thing over two years ago. And what does he have to do for you to accept him, etc. So now I doubt she's going to come to Christmas and I think this may be the last straw in our relationship. I've worked so hard on my own mental stability after all this crap and I no longer want to be a second option for her. I just don't know how I could live with myself if I cut her off, but I may have to. I would just say it's never easy cutting off somebody that you care about because of their bad decisions. But if you're not going to be able to open their eyes to how bad that relationship is, I think you do have to cut them off. Whether it's something that keeps landing somebody in jail, or is damaging their life or their health, at some point you have to understand the decisions that other people make that are directly hurting you the longer you try to stay involved, I think aren't worth trying to stay involved over. That said, hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of fueling your hatred for these entitled parents, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, parents wanted to risk their child's life to stop him from crying. I work at a zoo, and we're mostly closed for the winter, but our reptile house is still open because it's kept at the same temperature year-round. I'm working, showing people what the different animals are, answering their questions, when a family, two parents, one kid, comes in. 
They're mostly chill doing what all visitors do when I hear that the kid wants to hold the green mamba. Normally we let the kids hold some of the reptiles if they're non-venomous and non-aggressive. Green mambas are venomous, and this one in particular gets really aggressive when near people. The parents come and ask me if their kid can hold it. I tell them he can't for the above reasons and they tell him, and this is when he throws a massive fit. Apparently his favorite color is green and he only wanted to hold that snake. We had other green snakes, and thinking back I should have just got a different snake and told him it was a green mamba to avoid the BS, but I didn't think of that at the time. They come back to me and ask again and I firmly say no. They then got really upset and loud about how I was a terrible zookeeper and should just let their kid hold the snake. My manager hears the commotion and so did every other guest and comes over to see what's wrong. They tell him that I'm not letting their kid hold a snake when we let kids hold the snakes all the time. There is really only five snakes that we let people hold, mostly because most snakes don't like being held. So my manager then tells him to follow him and we'll let him hold a snake. They stop him and bring him to the green mamba and says it has to be this one. He tells them what I told them and that they can't let guests hold venomous snakes and they yell at him as well. Now, my manager doesn't have a lot of patience, so he just tells them to get out or he's going to call security to force them out. They promptly left, but not before calling us child-hating German World War II leaders. Can you put a life insurance policy on a kid? Maybe these parents need to be investigated. All I'm saying is, is that if we let kids do all the stuff that they whined about wanting to do, the population count would probably be significantly lower. Parent your kids. Our next story is, my entitled parents continue to force me to babysit and parent my younger brother, and then berate me for doing exactly what they asked me to. Hello again everyone. Before I start explaining what happened in this post, I have some good news. I'll be seeing a psychiatrist in December, but it'll be online, as in-person appointments have been booked out. Luckily there's Zoom chat, so I'll be able to explain without talking, and my parents won't be able to hear me. Another positive thing is that I'll hopefully be moving out by next year. Now, I'll get into the post. This started last week, and I had no idea my little brother was trying to continue this torment until earlier tonight. I'll start with what happened then. A few nights ago, I was enjoying dinner with my family before my brother swung his leg into me and kicked my leg. My parents didn't even react and just expected me to deal with it and move on. A few days later, I'd just finished vacuuming the house. I sat down on my bed and relaxed, but was disturbed by the sound of the vacuum again. I walked outside and saw my brother vacuuming the places I'd checked thoroughly. I told him we didn't need to vacuum there, and as soon as I walked near him, he dropped the vacuum and punched me. According to my parents, that was my fault, and I was supposed to move on. Yesterday, I came home from work after a long and tiring day, and my parents needed to go out for the night. I had no idea about this, and they sprung it on me out of nowhere. They expected me to know and were rather irritated that I didn't, even though they didn't explain. They ordered me to make dinner immediately. Luckily, there were some leftovers in the fridge I could heat up. I went to the kitchen and began heating up the leftover chicken. Once it had been heated up, I split up the container into two parts using a fork. I filled one bowl for me and another bowl for my little brother. I kept the remaining chicken in the container for somebody else, if they wanted to eat it for lunch or dinner. My little brother then walked into the kitchen and snatched the container and the fork away from me and dumped the rest into his bowl. I kindly asked him to give the fork back and told him that I was saving the rest of the chicken for someone else that might be hungry. But as I should have known, that was met by yells and verbal abuse. I quickly apologized for making dinner for him and then he started yelling horrible things at me. In his words, or what I can remember at least, he said, You're the worst big brother. You failed at being a brother. You're so freaking overprotective. I hate you. I'm sorry that mom and dad have to deal with you. These words deeply hurt me, and I decided to retreat to another room for some alone time. As I sat there, I could still hear him yelling obscenities at me, and I was crying. I then noticed a dusting brush that had been broken in half and threw it into the ground in sheer anger. I know I shouldn't have done that as that was rather immature, but I couldn't think of expressing my rage and sorrow in any other way. He saw this and walked into the room I was in. He picked it up and threw it at me and nearly hit my head and I threw my arms up to defend myself. 
I then got up from where I was sitting, and he ran away instantly. This isn't the first time he's thrown things at me either. He once threw a pen that almost hit me in the eye. I was almost finished with my dinner, and I thought that was the end of it. I was mistaken. He walked into the room while I wasn't paying attention and jammed the fork he was using into my arm. It actually drew blood and I tried to defend myself. He ran off again but I couldn't bring myself to chase after him. I was still recovering from the embarrassment and true horror I experienced during Halloween. I finished eating my dinner and cried to myself in my room. I felt alone and unsafe. Then I heard the sound of the garage door opening and my parents returning from their party. I tried to explain what happened, as I couldn't handle this myself. I tried talking it out with my little brother, but that didn't work. Their response was the usual, deal with it yourself. I tried to explain again that I needed help, but they instructed me to work it out with him and it wasn't their problem. I went back to my room annoyed. Now this afternoon, I had just come home from another long day at work, and I'm finally getting a break. I finished all my work and need to wait for a special celebration next year in January, which is when I'll be returning there. I sat down, put everything away, and began watching Jujutsu Kaisen and playing Pokemon Scarlet on my Switch. I'd already told my dad about my good news, so I was just waiting for mom to get home so I could tell her as well. She eventually did come home, and I walked up to her room to tell her about my news. I waited in the doorway and waited for her to get ready and put her stuff away before I could talk to her. As I stood there, I heard my little brother come up behind me. He said the words, Hey mum, in a welcoming voice. But then that voice turned into an aggravated tone for absolutely no reason. I remember him saying the words, Oh my god, before stomping away. I tried asking him what was wrong later, but he told me to just freak off. I told my mum, and she was very happy for me as well. I thought my life was about to turn in the right direction, but I was wrong again. Later when we were having dinner, my little brother decided to speak about last night and how awful I was to him. They all believed his lies and I tried to explain what happened. Apparently, I kicked him first during the time he kicked me and I turned off the vacuum, so he punched me. They believed this and berated me for acting like his parent and babysitter, even though that is exactly what they told me to do. I tried to talk to them about how they were wrong about all this and tell them what actually happened, free of my brother's lies. But I was cut off again for being disrespectful. My mother then started screaming and berating me about how her life was so hard and she wants us to pretend to get on and be happy with each other and using me as her emotional punching bag again. I was resisting the urge to cry, knowing that it would only make things worse. They'd yell at me for crying too. My brother then brought up the fact that I said, my parents are using me as a scapegoat and mental punching bag. I've never said that to him. He may have heard me muttering that at some point. This only caused more yelling and I felt incredibly stressed out. I tried to leave the table multiple times, but I was dragged back there verbally even though I wanted to say no. I was forced to listen to how my little brother doesn't have any more compassion for me left since I'm such a bad brother. My parents tried to have us finish up with things we enjoy so they could escape to watch their scripted live action shows. I told them I was happy with the shiny Pokemon I'd recently acquired in Scarlet, while my brother rambled on about how he could no longer enjoy the things I loved, as I sucked all the joy out of them just because I liked them, which were his exact words. Also apparently he wasn't aiming for me when he threw the brush. Even if he didn't purposely aim, I didn't know that and my parents expected me to. After I left the table, I sat in my room and cried. I felt awful. I was forced to listen to more lies and verbal abuse from my family, all because of one simple fact. I had the audacity to make dinner for my little brother. On a short note, during my Halloween adventures, my parents didn't come with us because they wanted to watch TV and get drunk. So it's actually kind of appalling how little parenting these parents are doing. And honestly, like, despite the fact that it's going to totally rock the boat, if the little brother does anything that even comes close as literally poking you in the arm forcefully with a fork, OP actually needs to call 911 because that is not okay. I mean, I guess it's not like a severe injury or something, but this dude is saying that they hate you, they despise you, everything you do makes them annoyed, and then going and stabbing you with a fork? 
I would be afraid of what would happen if they have a really bad day and they just snap. God forbid they realize there's more than forks in the kitchen. Our next story is, entitled parents fake being religious to try to get our daughter out of trouble for bullying. I'm a freshman in high school and I want to talk about a recent scenario that happened at my school. In my grade there's twins, a boy and a girl, Braxton and Ava. Braxton is a good kid for the most part. He's an athlete, plays multiple sports in school and out, though baseball is his main one. The only time Braxton is really mean is in gym class. He's the type of boy who will scream at you if you don't catch the ball and takes gym too seriously. Other than that, he's a chill dude though. Most people like and respect him. Ava is much worse. She's been a bully since kindergarten, is mean to everyone except her friends, and her only personality trait is being rich. I go to school in a pretty well-off area. My family's also well-off, so this is mostly an online thing. She likes to brag about her wealth on TikTok and Instagram. She's the type of kid who thinks she's better than everyone because she's rich. One thing you need to know about Braxton is he's the type of kid who wears a cross necklace to school, has God first in his social media bios, and will occasionally post Bible verses. He's nothing like Ned Flanders, but he's pretty openly religious and has been for about a year and a half. He said he found Christ through sports around 11 or 12. He's not a judgmental type of kid, he's friends with openly gay and trans students, and has said that he doesn't believe gay is a sin. Braxton does definitely have some more conservative views from religion, like saying he doesn't curse, he always uses replacement words in a TikTok instead of a curse word, and saying that he doesn't want tattoos and following rules about food, etc. He also owns a lot of stuff that combines religion and sports like bracelets with baseballs, saying that he can do stuff with God and shirts that talk about baseball and faith. Doesn't wear them every day though. Because of him talking about finding Christ through sports to various people, we also know that his entire family on both sides are atheists. Last week, right before Thanksgiving break, Ava and the group of girls she's friends with got in trouble for being homophobic to a boy, sending him messages with anti-gay slurs and telling him he's going to heck some really horrible stuff. This wasn't surprising coming from Ava's group of friends though. Ava and her friends are terrible people. I've never seen them show even a bit of remorse or empathy. The parents of the girls came to pick them up. Most made BS excuses to defend their daughter's behaviors, but the most outlandish had to come from Ava's. One of the parents said something about homosexuality being against their religion, and Ava's parents thought it would be a good idea to use the same excuse. The girls are also toxic to each other, and one of them mentioned how Braxton has talked about his family is atheist. Another girl elaborated on that, and then Ava's parents tried defending themselves before giving up and admitting that they lied about being religious and Christians, and were indeed atheists. We know all of this happened because one of Ava's friends was recording the conversation on her phone, and proudly posted on Snapchat about getting out of school suspension because of it, and how she gets to miss school now, and how they hated school. Since this ordeal has gone down and the recording was released, Braxton posted a story on Instagram, making an indirect jab at his sister, talking about how God hates bullying. Braxton and Ava were already known to not like each other much, but this probably made it much worse. I'm just glad Ava and her friends are gone for some time. Ava and Braxton's parents are delusionally entitled. Truly some of the most entitled I've ever heard of. Also, I acknowledge most atheists are totally chill people. I'm an atheist myself. This was just a crazy scenario that happened at my school that I needed to talk about. Regardless of the circumstances, can we all agree that it's just sad to see siblings, twins at that, bickering and fighting over something like this? I have siblings and I've always been fortunate enough to be so close to them and always in good spirits with them. It seems like such a foreign concept to me to have a sibling and be such at odds with them. It honestly makes me kind of sad because I know what it's like to have a sibling that every time you see them, it's always a good time. Our next story is, lady complained to California fish grill manager to make me move tables and got arrested. So this just happened and I'm pretty bent about it. I went to California fish grill for a late lunch. 
It was a pretty standard ordeal. I ordered my meal, grabbed a drink, and made sure to grab a small table with only two seats so I wouldn't take up too much space. Not that it really mattered because the restaurant was fairly empty with plenty of tables. As I'm casually sitting at this table for two, an older lady came up and asked me to move. I was a bit puzzled because she came in after me. The table I was at appeared to be untaken, and there were plenty of other available tables. I asked why, and she said she wanted a table big enough for her and her son. At this point, I told her I wasn't going to inconvenience myself when there were plenty of other open tables. She could simply go sit elsewhere with her son. So she started getting frustrated with me and telling me I needed to respect my elders and that her son wouldn't be able to sit at another table. I just ignored her though because it wasn't my problem. So this lady walks off and tells the manager that I took her table and was refusing to give it back to her. She brings the manager over and explained that her son is very upset and that I took their table and it was hurting his feelings. We had a few minutes of back and forth before the manager gives me this look of, I don't make enough money to deal with this, please just move. So whatever, I get up, go to another table, and this lady just glares at me. I glare back and she's sitting all by herself. At first, I thought she was just a liar and didn't have a son. Maybe she just wanted to abuse what little power she had. After like 10 minutes though, this guy walks in with a full suit and tie, maybe 40 to 50 years old, and approaches this lady and calls her mom. They exchange some words and he starts glaring at me too. At this point, I'm just annoyed and trying to eat my lunch in peace. So her son, a grown butt man, shouts at me across the restaurant and asks if I think it's funny to disrespect his mom like that. And I just looked at him puzzled because I had no idea what he's talking about. He shouts again, Yeah, you in the hat. So I just ignore him because this is stupid. As he continued to harass me, I just decided to flip him the bird. The lady and her son lost their crap got up yelling, screaming, and generally causing a scene. The son started threatening to kick my butt. He asked me if I liked being such a smart butt. So of course, I had to let him know that it was better than being a dumb butt. Anyways, this commotion resulted in the police being called by the manager. They showed up after an unclear amount of time, walk right up to this lady and her son, and ask them to leave. The lady starts going off about how I stole her table, was harassing her, and how it started. Now, this poor police officer looks down at me, casually sitting at my table, eating my salmon, and tells this ancient woman that I don't seem to be bothering anyone. So the lady signals out the manager, hoping that they'll corroborate her story, and the manager explains in great detail that this woman had come in and started harassing me. She asks the woman and her son to leave, and they both refuse because they paid for their food, and said they had a right to sit at any table for as long as they wanted. After refusing to leave, this hag of a woman and her son were cuffed and escorted away. I made sure to move to her table as she left, just to rub the salt in the wound. Not gonna lie, it would be pretty hard to hold yourself back from like breaking out the double arm wave over your head going bye, but I wouldn't want to give the police officer any more of a hard time than they already have. Imagine having to come all the way out there to shackle an entitled mother and their grown adult kid in a full suit. And we all know that that entitled mother was spinning some real entitled lies over there to their son. OP probably just about bludgeoned them with a sledgehammer before they moved over to the other table. Our next story is, my dad threw a fit because everyone was complimenting the cake my 9 year old daughter baked on her birthday instead of paying attention to him. My daughter had her 9th birthday last week. Since she was very young, she accompanied me in nearly everything I did. As I like to cook and bake, she also had already plenty of experience with helping by making various dishes and cakes. For her last birthday, however, she wanted to go first time all solo, meaning I was to sit and wait in case she had a question, but everything else was her. She was incredibly proud, and so was I, from picking the recipe, measuring, mixing, etc. The only thing I did was pull it out of the oven. She then proceeded to make the frosting and decorate the cake again, all by herself. Needless to say, everybody was very proud of her, and she was really looking forward to sharing her cake with the family and chipping in with everyone about her process. My mom is a baker also, and she heavily complimented my daughter. 
how wonderful the cake looked and tasted, and soon all of us will be coming to the daughter for advice. Daughter was gleaming with joy. Everyone complimented daughter as the cake was indeed delicious and beautiful. That was apparently too much for my dad who started getting increasingly fuzzy. First off, he started his, maybe you're trying to poison us with this, jokes, and I shushed him. This is when everybody asked daughter about how she did it. He got louder and louder, interrupting her to tell us that he's also capable of making cake and his cakes will always taste better, and it wasn't even a difficult cake, etc. Somebody else told him to be quiet as it was daughter's moment, so he waited to let the stupid cake talk pass, and then started interrupting every conversation that followed, just to make it all about him. When that failed, he got louder and talked with increased volume so that he would be heard. He even kind of pounded when she opened her presents, as nobody asked what he thought of the presents. So yeah, dear people of Reddit, that is my dad. Trapped in the body of a 65 year old man with the mind of a bratty 3 year old. This isn't even a dad, this is a granddad, right? This dude probably has to be what, in their 60s? And they're getting jealous over a 9 year old because they baked their own cake? And they're getting praised for it? At 9 years old for myself, it was probably praiseworthy if I could put bologna and a cheese slice on a piece of bread together. This 9 year old baking their own beautiful birthday cake deserves all the praise, especially considering it's their birthday. This granddad is seriously off one and I don't know, are they feeling lacking? Do they not get enough attention at home? Do people not talk to them enough? Like maybe you should sit them down and come from a place of kindness and be like, Listen, are you feeling insecure? We care about you. You know, it's weird to be so upset and so uptight over the attention a nine-year-old gets. Maybe just try to break down his mental psyche here. Maybe it would just make them realize how stupid they were being. That said, our final story of the day is, my entitled neighbor was mad that I took my shirt off in my own house. So Wednesday, I, 17-year-old female, was sick. I had a fever and just felt really bad so I was spending most of the day lying in bed. But around noon, I moved to the living room couch because it was getting really hot in my room and it was cool in the living room. And some context, our living room is filled with large windows that point to the street and my neighbor's house. So I went to the couch and I still felt hot, so I took off my shirt. At that point, I was only wearing short shorts and my bra. So I was laying down for a few minutes when there was a knock on the door and my mom went to go answer it. The living room is right next to the door, so it wasn't hard to hear the conversation. So my mom opened the door, and the neighbor, who we'll call Karen, was there and said, Hi, Susan, my mom, if you need clarification. How are you doing? I came over to tell you that your daughter needs to cover up. My mom then reasonably said, Excuse me? To which the Karen replied, Yes, it's kind of disgusting what she's doing, exposing herself like that. My mom, now a bit less patient, said, Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that you could tell me what to do with my kids in my house. Karen then replied, Oh no, that's not what I'm trying to do. It's just that my husband's office is right across your windows, and it's hard for him to concentrate on work when there's a naked teen on the other side of his window. My mom was just about as dumbfounded as I was at this point, and told Karen, Okay, three things. First, My daughter's not naked, and even if she was, it wouldn't matter because she lives here and she can wear whatever she wants. Second, what is your husband, a 45-year-old man, doing looking at my 17-year-old daughter in her underwear? And third, get off my property because we're done here. And with that, my mom slammed the door in Karen's face. We haven't heard from them since then, and on Friday, my mom bought curtains for the living room windows. So, yeah. That was my encounter with our neighbors. I 100% agree with the mom here. I mean, walking around in your underwear is no different than walking around in basically a swimsuit. I think we can all pretty much agree that the real problem here is the husband. If he needs to focus on work, they should focus on work and not on literally anything else. If they can't focus on their work because they're going to go do some sightseeing, maybe they need to have curtains on their windows. Although considering that you've now found out that your neighbor across the street is a creepo, you probably do want those curtains up just for that peace of mind. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. 
Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.